Welcome to One Drink with Alan. So we're going to have one drink, maybe two. Anyways, so a couple of months ago I thought about getting a haircut because I hadn't gotten one all year and it's December getting towards the end. And uh, I go to the haircut place and I haven't had one since January. Um, I don't know how everybody's getting a haircut that actually gives a shit about coronavirus, but never mind those mundane shit details for the time being. Anyways... I walk in there, I try to get an appointment, but the appointment wanted all this information, I didn't want to give them, and it's their place, so I'm not trying to knock them for having like weird rules about wanting information that makes no difference for getting a haircut. Anyways, I'm getting all moldy, so yeah, 80s Superman look I'm trying to get unintentionally, so anyways, the uh, they were like, alright, we so I go in there, and I'm like, hey, I'd like to get a haircut, I'll wait, it's no big deal, How, what do I gotta do, and they're like, well, we're going to need your name, phone number, and address. And I'm just like, oh, why is that? And they go, well, that's the policy for corona purposes. In case somebody gets it, we want to track them down and let them know they might have it. And I'm like, that's fine. Uh, you have a nice day. And I left because I'm not going to I'm not going to argue with that policy. You know? And they were like, and, you know, I don't I don't even like giving uh, any customer service my real name. You know, I go to a place where I'm ordering a sandwich or a haircut, which is a much more relative example. And they're like, hey, what's your what's your name? And I go, oh, my name's Ross Carvonister. Oh, how do you spell that? And they thought I made that up, Johnny on the spot, every time. I go, oh, that's easy. That's R-A-S-C-A-R-V-O-N-E-S-T-I-R. And they're like, oh, can you spell a little slower? Sure. R-A-S-C-A-R-V-O-N-E-S-T-I-R. And uh, as literally none of you know, that's a character from my books. And I wrote that name quite a few times. So it's, it's obviously I made it up. But yeah, that's the name I like to give people just because they don't, who cares? About, and usually like nine, uh, 99% of the time, they don't even, they don't even like actually write that down. Begging the question, why did they ask me to spell that? Other than to see how full of shit I am. Which, it's actually a valid reason, but clearly I'm, I'm, uh, they're more full of shit, because they can't write it down, and I'm willing to spell it as slow as they want. Anyways, so, yeah, I want, oh, so let's talk about Ross Carvonister for no reason. So, Ross Carvonister is a red dragon, a pretty old dragon, and my series, basically, they are the only ocular enchanter in the entire multiverse. And what that means is they can enchant someone's eyes with various different abilities. You want x-ray vision? Bam, no problem. You want to be able to see magic? You want to be able to see psionic stuff? You want to see through walls? You want, you know, see auras and, and many, many other things. And then eventually it's like, here's true sight, which is everything, and nothing's going to fool your eyes unless it's just under ridiculous circumstances like but magic eyes I, I loved those that was really fun to write about and Ross Carvonister was the only dude who was like yep I can enchant your eyes but it's very very expensive so they had a huge as red dragons tend to go they got a huge hoard of gold but ironically Ross Carvonister was famous for one other thing and in, in, of course, the series, because I completely made him up. You won't find him in anything. Roscoe Foster was famous for being the brother of Garrix, and Garrix is my favorite god of, of everything. And I, uh, I, I'd like to claim credit for making him up, but I did not. Garrix is a shout-out to Gary Gygax, clearly. It's a, he's a chaotic, evil, red dragon god also known as the Fire Lord. And now the Fire Lord Garrix um, is... He's got a, a really dumb, shitty story, but I, I really took a lot of liberation and just altering a lot about him. Obviously, the Fire Lord stayed the Fire Lord, but uh, he... Uh, basically, Garrix was, uh, was running the first of the Nine Hells. So if you go to Hell... And you go to the first hell, which is the hell of apathy. You know, you didn't do shit with your life. Garrix is running that shit, and you're, you're his bitch for all eternity. 
Uh, uh, Garrix was also the only dragon god in my books. So even a good dragon would have to actually try way harder to avoid hell than a, hu a human would. Because, and I don't even think I really put that in my books, but like basically, if, if you didn't want to go to hell as a dragon, you'd have to do two, two things you could do. One, just try to be the best possible dragon you could be to help anyone and everyone. And the other thing you could do is to ascend to divinity, which is what a lot of dragons ended up doing. But by doing that, it wasn't so much as becoming a god. It was more of they just exit the mortal realm and enter a higher plane of existence is basically what the dragons would mostly do. Very few actually became gods, and Garrix was the only one I bothered mentioning. Um, anyways, that's Roskar Vonister. Yeah. I just wanted to get a goddamn haircut two months ago. I can't even do that. I'm not done with this drink, so I'm gonna I'm gonna keep talking. So Fun little fact, I actually have an Eye of Garrix tattoo on my arm here. It's kind of hard to get it at a good angle, but yeah, it's there. I got it where I live here in Reno, but uh, yeah. And I even put that on, on the cover of my, uh, my seventh book, because it's the Book of Garrix. And uh, so yeah, that was a lot of fun, just writing that, because I wanted to write that for years, and I was like, fuck it, let me just add this thing in there. But anyways... Um, yeah, Garrix has kind of like a really lame backstory, so I had to really just ad-lib a whole bunch of that, because I wanted him to really just bolster up, and he ended up being like a major, uh, antagonist to even, like, other antagonists, like, he ended up just, like, fucking everything up. Anyways, that's my little fun, I should have gotten a haircut, but I refuse to... Some big old whiny pants, because I don't want to just give them my name. They don't need my name at all. So if anyone knows someone in Reno who does haircuts, Southern Reno, because I don't have a car, um, yeah, let me know, because I'm not going to tell you my name, but I could give you actual money for doing, you know, fixing this, this garbage, you know, it's whatever. I just got off of work, so that's why I look this way. Anyways, yeah, that's Ross Carvonister haircuts.